Cardinal State Governor Ubersoni has asked religious leaders in the state to help restore peace in the state. And National Security Advisor Nuri Badu assures voters of security during Kogi, Bayelsa and Imo governorship elections. I am Bola Oba Anfis is plus politics. Cardinal State Governor Ubersoni has appealed to religious leaders in the state to ensure peaceful coexistence among various people in the state irrespective of ethnic religious differences. Governor Sonny also challenged the religious leaders to put an end to the menace of bloodletting that has characterized the state for decades. Cardinal State was particularly engulfed by bloodshed during the Sharia crisis of the year 2000 between the two major religions when many lives and property were lost and destroyed. Joining us live is Reverend Joseph John Hayab, Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, Cardinal State Chapter, and Country Director of Global Peace Foundation, Nigeria. Reverend, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you for having me and good evening to all Nigerians. How is the security situation in Kaduna as of today, sir? Well, uh, we will say that as of today, the situation in Kaduna is calm. We are looking forward with hope that we will continue to make progress in our effort for the restoration of peace, restoration of love, restoration of togetherness. Kaduna in the past decades have actually suffered so much violence, as you rightly put in your story, which led to the death of so many people. Innocent lives have been lost. Some of them would have been future leaders of these states, some of them would have been future scientists of this great country and this world, but they were wasted due to ignorance and due to efforts by the different groups to see that they are protecting either their faith or defending what they feel is being tempered with. But in the past few weeks, so much progress has been made because the new governor in his efforts to restore peace is beginning to talk lovingly, is beginning to talk maturely, is beginning to talk friendly, is beginning to talk in such a way that he can woo or win many people towards unity, towards understanding. Uh, not that much progress has been made, but at least there is indication that there is a division from yesterday's approach to issues to a new approach to relationship, a new approach to respect, a new approach to finding solution. So a few years, and especially, well, there is a change, there is an effort towards finding solution. Is that a polite, is that a polite, uh, a condemnation of the attitude or mannerism or the style of the immediate past governor? Well, truly speaking, I don't need to say it. Uh, Nigerians knew, and even when he was just about to rotate off, one of the most publicized video of his statement, his bigotry and others, just tell a lot about what happened in the past. And so... We have considered that is a past. We are looking forward to for something new. And the governor has promised that, yes, I have my different approach. I took out of office and swore to defend and protect every citizen, irrespective of his tribe, irrespective of his religion. So for us, let's give him the benefit of the doubt to see what he will do. But when we dwell too much on the past pains, when we dwell too much of the past insult that we received from the former governor, we may not give good attention to the new approach. So we are, what we are trying to do and what we are pleading to is that what has happened has happened. 
since the man in the hem of affairs now is willing to speak to people, is willing to win people. Look, the fact about it is that, you know, security is everybody's business. And it takes people to show security agencies things that are happening. It takes people to inform security agencies where evil is going on. It takes people to help security agencies understand the challenge that is going on in the state. But when people don't have trust on their leadership, when people begin to feel their leadership are loading it on them and costing them more pains than, than good, they don't speak. Even when they see something, they don't say something. So I think the approach of the new governor is... I want all of you to be involved in the approach towards finding a solution. Since all of you need to be involved, please trust me. I'm going to listen to you. I want you to tell me. I want you us to talk together. I want you to speak to the security agencies. Let's find a solution. And for us, we are saying, let's work with this man and see whether we can find a solution. No. Welcome. Welcome back. Um, we had technical issues. We've now reconnected uh, with our guest. Um, Reverend, are you there? Uh, it comes with the territory. That's uh, that's what we experience in Nigeria regularly. Drop calls and all the beats. But having said that, when you were talking before uh, before the line got disrupted, uh, a part of me was like hearing, okay, was it that those of you in leadership, especially religious leadership, and of the particular faith that you belong to, was it that at some point, you detached from connecting with the former governor with a view to solving the security problem because the way you were speaking, it was almost uh, discernible that you people may at some point have resigned from engaging with the immediate past governor with a view to, to solving uh, the problem, security problem. Hello? Hello? It is what it is. Uh, sometimes in Nigeria, you just get used to what ordinarily works smoothly. Some other clients are doing what it does, you know. Is it back now? Yeah, I'm right with you now. I think. Oh, uh, okay. That's, okay. Uh, okay. Okay then. Welcome back. Uh, quite unfortunately, we really need to apologize. The line has been quite erratic, but we have our guest back. Reverend, are you there? Yes, I'm back. I'm sorry. Uh, not uh, your, not you your fault. Network yeah. Uh, not your fault. I, I said, you know, when you were making your last point. I could almost, I could almost glean or design uh, the attitude of detachment from the immediate past governor on issues of security because maybe uh, people of your faith and people in leadership in your faith uh, maybe felt betrayed or felt uh, disrespected. Could that perception uh, be right or wrong? Well, so many things happened during the last administration. Uh, some of them, sometimes we don't want to talk about that, but uh, for purpose of responding to your question, the fact of all is that even during Security Council meeting, there was no robust discussion between security and service serving in Kaduna State and the then governor because he was a master know it all. Before he, they would say one, he will have answers to all. So most of them were just careful not to cut, not to step on toes, not to say anything that will make uh, cause any problem and unfortunately we never get good result uh, now we are beginning to try something else engagement discussion dialogue talking with people listening to people giving people opportunity to speak and we can see the difference uh, because as i said there is no way you can run security by knowing it all. You run security by listening to people. You run security by hearing from people. You run security by also allowing people to play certain role and take responsibility for certain things. But if you know it all, the temptation is that everybody will just watch and look at you and just be a spectator. I think that was what happened. So it's not just about one group of people feel disrespected or one group of people feel that they were not carried along. A larger se section of the state 
we are really not carried along. At that time, uh, the kind of press statements coming out of government house was more of attacking people, attacking leaders, attacking certain groups. And I personally have to say this to the new governor when I met him a few days ago. I commended his press secretary for having a moderate way of issuing press statement. He issues press statement with maturity, issues press statement with understanding the sensitivity, sensitivity of, the, of the community. And so people now have to list, I have to now say, hey, wait a minute, what are we hearing? Because in the past, they would just write press statement and issue them accusing people, even those who are grieved and are worried because of their pains. So if you have already been attacked, what else will you say? But it is in the past now. What we need to do is to focus on what do we do going forward so that we don't waste time talking about something that we cannot correct. Is it, is it me who is perhaps uh, uh, thinking in this way? There's a way, when I, when, whenever I think about Kaduna, there's a way I feel that we have failed as leaders across the board now. And it's not only about your faith or the other major faith in Kaduna or the political leadership or indeed uh, civil society leadership and uh, uh, private sector leadership, that we, may, we may be looking at Kaduna as the ultimate, ultimate marker of our failure. Reason being that Kaduna is the security capital of Nigeria. You got NDA that was even ironically at some point attacked. You've got many, yeah. not only military formations, but you've got paramilitary formations and elite, elite institutions. And yet, Kaduna has suddenly degenerated to a point where even the iconic military institution of Nigeria was at some point attacked. Are we sitting together as leaders? And I don't want to be particular about you or your faith. Are we all sitting together as leaders and feeling ashamed that this is happening in Kaduna? Well, I have said this, but in response to your question, truly speaking, no one can exonerate himself of this blame. We all share one blame or the other. But you see, there must be someone who called for the sitting. There must be someone who lead the conversation. There must be someone who moderate the dialogue. There must be someone who engage the people. If the person who's supposed to moderate the dialogue, to engage the people, to call for those different views on the table, chose to do it differently, blaming the other people may not be good enough. But I, I do understand what you mean. Everybody have a role to play, and we need to continue to play those roles. In one of the engagements recently we had with the governor, when he called the faith leaders and plead and appealed to us to work together to find solutions, I told him this, and I'm going to repeat it. I said, look, apart from being Kant chairman, I'm a development practitioner. I understand some of the challenge that even NGOs, civil societies operating in Kaduna are facing. You receive grants from donors, that you want to work in a particular community to promote togetherness, to promote religious freedom, to promote peace, uh, to, to, to put together structures for peace. And you keep writing fantastic reports of events that happen, the uh, success you think that you are, you are noticing from the, from the conversation, only for you the next week to find out that in the same community where you are writing reports, good reports of progress, People are being killed. People started killing one another. And donors will be asking you questions. How do we marry your report and the reality of what we are reading? You say, look, there is a success story in Kachia, a success story in Brindamwali, a success story in Makarpi, a success story in Zongon uh, Kata. But people are being killed. So sometimes they will now say, wait a minute, we can continue to be putting our money when there is nothing to hold, when there is no success that we can say this is true impact. So I... I Everybody is worried, and people really want a way out. So I can say God has chosen at this time to send someone who seems to have a different spirit. And he has said it publicly. He said, look, I am over. I am different. I want to view things differently. I want to approach things differently. I want to 
attend to things differently. And he said, and I quote, I took out of office and I hold the Holy Quran. I swore by the Quran that I will be just to everybody. I will not go, I don't want to meet God and be ashamed of myself. Neither will I want to meet God and be saying, look, I'm a fail or I, I fell as a leader. So I carry this burden and I want you to help me to do it right. If we had had such invitation, such willingness by previous leader, probably the different groups will come together and find a way out. I even said in that meeting that, look, Kaduna, yes, have had many crises, but there was a time we began to make progress. We made progress for nine years and there was no killing. What went wrong that we had problem and then didn't take it off from where we had problem to continue? It's like someone who have journeyed all the way from Lagos to Kaduna and is about entering Kaduna town and had a flat tire. And you tell him that, look, Go back to Lagos and start the journey again since you had a flat tire when you were about entering our city. It is wrong. All we needed to do was to find out what happened that we had a flat tire. Do we need a new tire? Do we need to correct the wheel or certain things in our car? So, and then move on. We didn't do that. And we wasted eight years just trying to speak English, write uh, press statements without concrete action for peace. And people just became tired because every day, every family is complaining that their loved ones have been kidnapped or communities are attacking each other. Oh, okay. People are being killed. I, I, I and need, the rhetoric, I, we are not peaceful rhetoric at all. I, I, I need to now uh, be a bit more granular with you. We have looked at the panoramic picture. We have looked at uh, the immediate past. Uh, you have touched on the positive change of attitude that you have gleaned from the new governor. But at the end of the day, security is a very uh, detailed, detailed organism. And what do I mean by, by that? Uh, security is about, is about uh, piecing together information. Security is about making sure that those who need to be quickly abreast of the information uh, we are how well as leader of the Christian community in the state, how well are you uh, training or are you getting the leadership of the churches to, uh, to teaching skills such as uh, observation, uh, you know, taking notes of uh, change unusual developments and changes in the environment, uh, having effective communication skills with security, uh, security agencies and establishments, because ultimately, uh, like they say in like they say in England, if you see something, say something so that something will be done. Uh, how well is the Christian leadership community uh, imparting that? to the value chain of the body of Christ in Kaduna? Thank you very much for asking that question. Uh, you will agree, if you have been following events, you will know that uh, we've been doing a lot of training. Recently, we had a program, a workshop between, uh, that bring together Christian leaders and Muslim leaders. We call it synergy between religious leaders and security agencies. We have looked at the past, Religious leaders don't find it easy to reach out to security agencies nor give them information. So we begin to find a platform where that will be corrected. I remember in that meeting, even the uh, naval, uh, the co commander of the naval force sent the chaplains to be there. The police sent their chaplains to be there. The military also sent their chaplains to be there. And religious leaders were there, and we had a robust conversation on how we can work together or we can have synergy in our effort to find peace in Kaduna State. We've done trainings through my NGO and other NGOs in Kaduna State on early warning uh, response mechanism. So religious leaders are not completely ignorant of that. Uh, and then we begin to bring back those days of engagement between religious leaders and uh, of different faiths talking to one another, forming a network and teaching each other's non-violence communication and how we can together report events that we see. I've earlier said in this uh, program that, you see, people see something and don't say something because they don't trust leadership. 
People see something and don't say something because they are also afraid of the leadership. People see something and don't say something because in their own thinking, it may backfire because there is no honesty probably from the side of the leadership. I think this is the key thing that we are seeing, that there's a shift in the way and approach of government. We want intelligent gathering, but we can't get information when we are disconnected with the people. Neither can we get information when the real people that the people give information also do not trust us. Imagine a local a, 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 a community person who is probably a Christian. He may not have access to speak to the governor or speak to the commissioner of police, but he can send or call my attention or call the leadership of the church or leadership of the most attention that, look, this is what we are observing happening in our land. But if the governor have already come out to rubbish the leaders and say he, they are this, they are that, the other person will not even be courageous enough to tell his leaders because he wouldn't want to hear instead of his I, I leaders think, telling what I, is I happening think, and I, there are issues. I, so I, the commissioner of police took a first step. Two months ago, he organized a meeting between the commissioner of police and Christian leaders. It was well publicized. Your medium also uh, publicized it. It was a, an interactive session that we could reach out to each other and understand and have access to telling each other what we know so that the evil will not be done before we come and cry out. But before it happened, we have sent information. And if the police respond positively or the security agencies respond positively, then we will avert it. And gradually you can see that few things are being averted. With time, we may even get everything under control. Um, I cannot but also ask you, do you, especially the Christians of Southern Kaduna, do you feel a bit upbeat uh, because uh, the chief of defense staff happens to be uh, a son of the soil, as they, as they call it in, in uh, colloquial Yoruba English, uh, from Southern Kanduno? Is that also a reason to be upbeat that at least uh, you, you people have somebody who can empathize and understand your situation? For me as a pastor, for me as a citizen, for me as a leader, the appointment of General Chris is a national appointment. He is the chief of defense staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not of Kaduna State, not of Southern Kaduna. And I don't want to put pressure on him by making him look like he is there for us. He is there to ensure that things work well in Nigeria. Security is in place in Nigeria, from the southeast to the south-south, to the southwest, to the northwest, to northeast and north-central. So he wasn't appointed for us. He was appointed for Nigeria. But let me say something I've said severally and I want to repeat today. That when this new administration did the appointment, and one of the persons appointed is General Lagwaja, who is the chief of army staff. For me, Reverend Hayab, and to many of us in Kaduna State, it was one of the best appointments we celebrated. We, and we are still celebrating because, for one, when General Lagwaja came to Kaduna some years ago as the chief, as the uh, general, general officer commanding the 1st Mechanized Division, he took the fight to the bandit and they started running away. He is such a pragmatic and action man. And you can even see up to today he's doing that. We don't know what happened that the leadership at that time removed him as the GOC. Fortunately, now he is the chief of army staff. He is to send the men out there. And he's not just sending the men, but he is going out with the men. So with Christopher, with General Christopher there as someone from us, which is not really the matter, but with someone with a good intention and good spirit like General Lagwaja, we can see hope. So what we just want to do is support them in the best we can, with the best we can support and give them all that they need to succeed. Because these criminals are not spirit. If people would tell what they know about them, the military or the security agency can easily fish them out. That's the best place, you know, a wonderful place to leave it. We wish you all the best. We hope to hear from you soon and we should be hearing good news about Kaduna, not this disturbing, emotionally uh, racking uh, stories that we get to hear from Kaduna. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. We we'll go for a short break, and when we're back, we're going to the second segment of the program.